we finally have the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC 2 release date. The Indigo Disc launches on December 14th. Did we get a trailer? No, we did not. So this is just a random Thursday tweet at 6 in the morning to go, yeah, by the way, DLC is going to be uh, December 14th. I guess mark your calendars. This is following the announcement with the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC bundle pack. Also, did the website update yet? It did not. The last bit of Pokemon news we had was September 26th, over a month ago. October didn't give us any news or trailers, just some tweets about spooky ghost type Pokemon. And this is where we got the announcement for the dual pack that is launching on November 3rd. So they waited until just before the dual pack launches so people understand that no, the DLC is not launching November 3rd, it's just the physical copy, and anyone paying attention already knew this because it was posted on the website. You will need to download an update after it launches in winter 2023, and even though it was reiterated many times, it's still 2023, people were still expecting the DLC to happen in 2024. Pokemon community is stupid, and it wouldn't be a Verlicify video without that, but also showing more receipts. So I did a video two weeks ago saying, yo, we don't have any Pokemon news. Doesn't seem like we're getting a trailer in October, so we're going to have to wait for some time in November for an update about the Teal Mask. And then we got this dude. Next one is coming October 31st, already teased literally in the last trailer. Except they didn't. That's just a complete lie. Teased, yes. It wasn't in golden words at the end. You gotta look into the subtleties. Gravity Fall style. Other YouTubers have covered this extensively. Which is all you need to know that it's complete bullshit. Further proof that every other PokeTuber is a bad actor. They are frauds. They only know how to clickbait fake information and leaks and garbage. So I'll leave you to do your own research. Either that or wait 12 days. Literally nothing to research. I even said like every other PokeTuber is a fraud that only knows how to be wrong 99% of the time. No research to be made, only fantasy. No reply. N no example. They say like, yeah, you just got to look for it. Okay, I mean, if you've already solved this and all the other PokeTubers have already solved this, then where's the tease? Spell it out. Oh, you can't because it's complete fabrication. Must suck being this much of an idiot. This is the Pokemon community. It's over 90% cretins that are completely detached from reality and care about nothing but themselves because that is the narcissism that has plagued social media and completely taken over. They are completely incapable of thinking for themselves or applying basic comprehension skills and common sense to anything, and because reality is unfun, they latch onto the bad actors deliberately exploiting them for gain. That is why I say every other PokeTuber is bad, because on an influencer scale, there's no one else that's actually doing any good. All this brain rot has made the average IQ in the Pokemon community like 70, just straight up non-functioning. Uh, we also got some other stuff going on, talking about how Pokemon Challenges is a fraud, going into what a Nuzlocke actually is if you hack the game and you cheat in rare candies to speed up the grinding, you're no longer doing a Nuzlocke, and you're lowering the difficulty to where you don't have a challenge anymore. Oh yeah, also, it became like a nationally televised thing that everyone in the Pokemon community hacks their Pokemon, and it was shown on the TV show Survivor. So if you missed that story, definitely watch and share the video. Also, if you want to see the evil of these influencers, you can check out this video as well. Uh, later today, we have the big one, Seijun Park is a cheater. Pokemon history is a lie, and then just some other, like, great battles. This is one of the craziest sweeps you'll ever see, and overall, the content has been solid. As for my thoughts on the DLC, I'm excited for it. I've only been hype for the Indigo Disc. That's why I want more trailers. That's why I want the Pokemon Company to not suck and actually make us excited for the upcoming Pokemon games or DLC. But no, we don't get trailers, we don't get updates, we are just completely devoid of any hype whatsoever. We are as detached from 2016 or Generation 7 as it gets. And now we're just getting random tweet announcements and website updates. Has the channel updated yet? 
No, just straight up no trailer. Thursday is kind of weird, but it happened a lot in Generation 6. We just got it whenever. So yeah, that was when we got the bundle announcement. It was just a tweet. Hey, bundle. Maybe the website updates. Maybe it doesn't. Apparently, the launch of the DLC, part two of effectively what is our game for the year, not important enough to be timely about. Uh, the Teal Mask kind of fizzled out. Worse story than the Crown Tundra. Way worse than the Isle of Armor. Less content. You blow through it in a couple of hours. A couple of little things to do. Mostly filler to just like fill the decks to get Blood Moon Ursaluna. The competitive has been completely disgusting because Ogre Pond, Blood Moon Ursaluna, all the new Pokemon just introducing unacceptable amounts of power creep. Uh, the competitive stuff that's looking cool is in the Indigo Disc. We still have the mystery of the 19th Terra type. Oh, that's just going to give more hackers advantage if you don't have like enough resources or if it takes too long to get. Might be that way because it's special. So big shake up there. The Dex is also looking pretty cool. And then we have the new moves, which are going to mostly ruin competitive. As if anti-tanking isn't prevalent enough, psychic noise is going to come in. That's common in any capacity. G GG. But even then, it's still looking good. A lot of awesome features shown in the trailer. Maybe the Pokemon coming in and the new Pokemon balance things out where maybe there's counters or things are checking things and it's more enjoyable again. A lot of content overall, any competitive focus, even like just inside the story of the game, like what we saw with Pokemon Sword and Shield and Galar, just kind of making the entire region about being a Pokemon superstar and gym leader and having the epic arenas and crazy gym theme and just like the battle stadium being at its best form right then. Yeah, like everything was really cool. So this kind of brings that back, but we have to wait another month and a half until that becomes things. So like just nothing, nothing's happening. We get a trailer. Pokemon's dead already. No one's playing the games. No one's engaging. No one's excited about anything. Oh yeah, we also have Kieran's story to look forward to. So I don't think the story of the Indigo Disc is going to be great. It's going to be like all the other stuff. Battle facility, a lot of upgrades, a lot of new features and expansion that spills into competitive and it's a lot of content to work for. But like, I don't care if Kieran is like all pissy because he's being possessed by the fourth toxic chain Pokemon. We have speculation on that and some data mine to support it. But like, yeah... Weirdo stuff's going on, but we'll see how that plays out. We also get to go back to the Paldea region. There's also new Pokemon and Paradox shenanigans. So we're going to watch all of this expand. So yeah, it's going to be content. It's going to get pretty cool here, but there's like no hype going into it. I don't know what they can show, and I don't think there's going to be like much more content than like what was data mined and speculated already on. But unfortunately, the Pokemon community and all of its influencers are irredeemable garbage at this point, so there's nothing to really take away from this. Even if the Indigo Disc like makes the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with DLC better than Pokemon Sword and Shield with DLC, because Pokemon Sword and Shield with DLC is goaded and one of the best Pokemon experiences you can get, it's not going to matter. And then, like, we had Pokemon World to be a disaster and everyone's still cheating and there's more cheating and more talk of cheating and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, we're going to need to see some major changes. It actually seems like work went into this, but it's mostly filler. And then we're going to be two and a half months away from Pokemon Day. That's where all the announcements are. Still no Pokemon Quest 2. Battle Simulator. Unless they ban everyone that qualified for Worlds and they permanently ban Wolf Glick. Pokemon's dead. I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. I don't see anything changing unless like there's major things done about the sad state of this community, its influencers, and competitive scene. That's where we're at right now. That's that's what happens when I get over a month without a Pokemon update and then still nothing crazy following it up. It's rough. It's it's unfortunate. Like if you're a good, honest person that just wants to enjoy Pokemon. No, nothing really there for you anymore. You gotta be a toxic Zoomer or Millennial that's an entitled brat and just lying about everything or else you're not having a good time. So you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.